Um, a, a couple of other questions here related to the uh, some of the frameworks that you guys are using. What kind of frameworks did you use for state machine development? And so um, I mentioned we had uh, we have a large team of developers, and um, use of state machines wasn't something that we necessarily um, wrapped into our software development guidelines and processes. And so when, when you bring in such a, a wide range of developers, they they come with their own tools in their pockets, and so. Um, you'd be surprised that we have uh, three different state machine implementations in the system. Um, the one that I mentioned in the talk was Samix. Um, um, uh, there is, we are a big fan of the hierarchical state machines, and so I would say that one's the most prominently used state machine. It, these state machines lend itself because um, events turn into messages, right? Um, and when I talked about our, our messaging architecture, you know, that the tasks wait for messages to come in, they wait for a single place for these messages to come in. Those messages then turn into events into the state machine. And we have a way that, that developers can then define their state machines um, in a file, uh, defining the states, defining what the entry actions are, defining what each of the events that may come in and what those events result in, um, how, this, how, the, how, the, how you jump from state to state, all that's defined in, in a file. And then um, we have a code generator that goes through and implements these state machines um, which saves the developer from having to implement those those state machines um, in a more traditional in a more traditional way. And I, like I said in the talk, we have about 40 of the HSM state machines. Um, we have a couple others that I, I don't necessarily. Some of them are homegrown, um, um, but they're they're used to a lesser degree. Okay. 